Mr. Speaker, I can almost guarantee that I will not belabor what is obviously an extremely good gesture by this government on behalf of the civil servants of this country. I want to start off my brief discourse or my brief contribution, Mr. Speaker, by basically disclosing or, or rather highlighting the fact that the NIC is in such a good position that they can come to almost anybody's rescue. And you know why that happens, Mr. Speaker? Because of the policies ruled out by this government. Unemployment being very low, invariably has the domino effect on the collections by NIC. They have indicated earlier this year, Mr. Speaker, that last year they collected the most money ever on record as contributions from employers and employees. And this, not, this did not happen by accident, Mr. Speaker. This did not happen by accident. It did not happen fortuitously. It happened because we have a man at the helm of this ship. We have a captain who can navigate the financial waters and bring reprieve to the people of this country, Mr. Speaker. That is what we have, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, only yesterday, we received what was a refreshing, a refreshing presentation from the ECCB staff, Mr. Speaker, captained by the governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. And Mr. Speaker, those, though this forum may not provide me with the opportunity to explain to the people of St. Lucia the trajectory on which our country was from 2016 up to 2021. It, it was really disheartening, Mr. Speaker, when our debt to GDP was at an all-time low when the Labour Party left office in 2016. It was at an all-time low, and by 2021, it was the highest ever on record in this country. That is a fact. And I, we will show it. And guess what, Mr. Speaker? You know, one of the things I asked the Governor General, are you meeting the leader of the opposition? And he said, yes. I said, are you going to explain that to him? Will he see this chart? He said, yes. So, the, sorry, the Governor of the ECCB. Sorry. And he said, yes. And that was reassuring, Mr. Speaker, because they will tend to say, we drew the chart. <laughs> They will say when I put it up at a different forum, them fellas that draw that. That is what they will say. So it was really reassuring when the governor of the central bank put this chat up in cabinet and I was audacious enough to ask him what you think accounted for that rise in debt to GDP between 2016 and 2021 and obviously the fall from 2021 till now. He said, Mr. Frederick, I know where you're going. That was his answer. But it is just prudent management, Mr. Speaker. That is exactly what it is. It is prudent management because when a man could take our country, our debt to GDP, at its lowest ever, and release it at its highest ever, it has to take prudent management to steer the ship, Mr. Speaker, back to a situation on a trajectory of seeming prosperity. And I want to say this, Mr. Speaker, numbers never lie. No matter what we say, numbers don't lie. Mr. Speaker, since we lost the protection of our bananas on the European market in 1992, 32 years ago, the economy of this country has never grown successively for three years by more than 3%. Guess what? Guess what? For the last three years, we have grown by more than 3%. The governor of the ECCB indicated we are on a trajectory to grow by between 7 and 7.5% 7 at the end of this financial year. And he projects a 4% growth in the year next year. That would mean, Mr. Speaker, that would mean that St. Lucia would enjoy a record under this administration of five years of consecutive growth of more than 3% every year. 
and compare that, Mr. Speaker, to what was taken for governance, what preceded 2021. And I dare say, Mr. Speaker, it was a divine intervention. Bodje te si pose me la me, ek bodje me la me, si pasa ne nu tout te kane. That is what would have happened to us. We were going down the precipice, Mr. Speaker, rolling into the sea, and all of us would have drowned in debt. We would have drowned. And I will show St. Lucia how under the last administration, they took our economy from the best to the worst. They took our debt to GDP from the lowest to its highest. Yet they claim they manage the country well. But Mr. Speaker, when you have that kind of guarantee, anyone who opposes it opposes the development and empowerment of our people. Because that guarantee, Mr. Speaker, at 3%, which, me, which mean the unlending would be about 4, 4.5%, would be an unprecedented interest rate for civil servants in this country. And I want you to, everybody around this table, to give themselves a round of applause. Because civil servants would have never seen such a facility. In the first place, you don't need a deposit, you get 100% financing. You do not pay stamp duty. Stamp duty on $400,000, Mr. Speaker, at the 2% statutory legislated is $8,000. $8,000 you get off, $1,000 towards your legal fees, no deposit. What more can the government do for you to empower you? What more, Mr. Speaker? You know, probably, Mr. Speaker, and, and, and that's the thing, you know, that is the thing. People's empowerment is important. Not the empowerment of foreigners and friends or, and those people who just come and we take things and give them golo. Or we take passports, tell them sell it and put the money in an escrow account overseas. No, Mr. Speaker, the government is doing whatever it can to ensure that the people of this country, especially the civil servants, are empowered and given incentives so that each and every civil servant can now embark upon having their own piece of St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, not too long ago, we had this open day in Talvan Barbono. We had 73 lots, 73. And they were gone the very day, Mr. Speaker. They were gone the very day that we had the, 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 the open day. They were gone that same day. Because you know what? When we calculated the break-even cost, Mr. Speaker, or the break-even price, bearing in mind that the roads would be concreted, there would be water, electricity, all everything, Mr. Speaker. I indicated to the Prime Minister that the break-even price would have been around $16.1650. And he, indicated, he said to me, Mr. Minister, empower our people do whatever it takes take a loss if you have to we will subsidize it but give the people the land at less than the 16 dollars it will cost you and we went down to 14 dollars and 50 cents a square foot Mr. Speaker. and i can tell you there are loads and loads of civil servants who now have made deposits and will soon be owners of a piece of St. Lucia. So, Mr. Speaker, I wholeheartedly, I wholeheartedly support this gesture, this initiative. It will not, yes, a guarantee is part of your debt portfolio, but given the record that the bank has had with NIC, there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that SLDB will meet its commitments to the National Insurance Cooperation. And you know, Mr. Speaker, that is the good thing. We are taking pensioners' money to assist other St. Lucians. We are not taking pensioners' money to give to any establishment, institution, or foreign company to buy land and make millions in profit. We are not doing that. We are using pensioners' money for the benefit 
of us all. That is what we are doing, Mr. Speaker. We are not taking $30 million and give Carbot or give this one. No. No. We are using pensioners' money to empower St. Lucians. And I'm hoping, Mr. Speaker, that every other administration, every other government, whether it is United Workers' Party or the St. Lucian Labor Party, should be guided by this principle, Mr. Speaker. If you are using our pensioners' money, use it for the benefit of St. Lucians and not the benefit of foreigners. And so, Mr. Speaker, with those few words, as I said, I wholeheartedly, if there is anything such as 200%, I support this motion 200%. I thank you.